I would say that it was the most nervous I've ever been in my life. I remember the crowd was right with us. Over 25,000 people came and I had the very best time in Glastonbury, like you can imagine. My favourite Glastonbury memory is the evening that I decided to DJ at Lost Vegas dressed as a bumblebee. Uh, I started the set in my full civvies, including welly boots, of course, and as the set progressed, I gradually disrobed and dressed as a bumblebee. I met the Rolling Stones for the first time backstage. Just amazing, such a chilled vibe, so iconic. I can't believe that I have those memories to cherish forever. Incredible. Playing with the Killers at their headline set, 2019, looking out over that vast sea of people and the campfires and the flags and the lights. It was quite a moment. Getting to watch Jamie T on the Sunday on the other stage in 2015 when he hadn't played for quite a few years and he had brought out Carry On The Grudge. Um, he'd kind of been um, a favourite of mine right from he put, when he put out his first record, Panic Prevention, but he'd gone a bit kind of quiet for, for a while. He'd been elusive and then he came back out with just a set that was totally joyous and triumphant. Well, I was playing at the same time as The Cure. So I just thought, well, our first time there, we're going to have a, a good, good time. But nobody was prepared for what happened. The tent had to open up the sides of the tent because the amount of people that turned up was incredible. Playing Chime at the end of the set in 94, wasn't yeah. it? And we just looked at each other, looked at the audience and just did a little dance, the chishtable dance that we used to do before bath time when we were little kids. <laughs> On the side of the bath together. The year that David Bowie headlined was the year 2000 and we played and my dressing room was next to his and he was such a down to earth man. I was such a huge fan before I met him, but after I met him, I was even more of a fan. The first time we played there, um, our tour manager didn't have the right passes. We were on the enemy stage at 12 o'clock in the afternoon and we were basically still trying to get in the gig at 12 o'clock. And I remember that we finally got in there, managed to convince him that we're supposed to be on stage now. And we just ran in, ran on stage uh, in the clothes that we actually just, you know, turned up in the gig in. Um, Ace was already on there, kind of like white as a sheet, like, where's the rest of the band? And we played four songs, smashed it, and that was it. Playing the other stage in 2015, but then the next day playing a secret, much smaller show with a bunch of brand new songs that seemed to really connect to people unexpectedly and we all came off in tears. That doesn't happen at other festivals. Has to be playing to a very stripped down pyramid stage halfway through lockdown. Um, I'm really, really excited to be coming back this year to West Holt stage with everything and everyone in full effect. I can't wait. Bernard decided to drink a bottle of Perno in the car ready for the gig. So we got to the gig and during one song we fell over and we were like, what the hell is he doing? And he was playing his guitar, still. <laughs> so that was the funniest moment and the best time, I think, at Glastonbury. I remember the crowd was right with us. It was a fantastic night, and I'm really honoured that we got to do it. Wheeling my daughter Prudence across to the main stage in her pushchair to watch Willie Nelson and being told by somebody, I hope you don't drive a car like that. Back in 2019, when I played the John Peel stage, um, I would say that it was the most nervous I've ever been in my life. And to this day, it's still one of my top five shows. Was actually getting two hours of sleep before my show. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's come to that.